when you need to use Smart List Designer, one thing that is helpful is if there's an area of the Smart List that you're working in that you want to have additional fields that might not be available in the list of columns, you can actually start by having your cursor on that particular Smart List and then you click New to go into the Designer. So for example, in the vendors, you might want to have the vendor um, EFT information or banking information for your vendors. So that's actually connected into vendor addresses. So you can highlight vendor addresses and then click New. And what you'll see is in the Smart List Designer, the information related to the databases is over here on the left. And there's one section for each one of the products that you have installed in GP. And then because I started with the vendor addresses, everything from the vendor address Smart List, I should say, uh, filled in this section in the selected fields. So now all I need to do is add additional fields to this in order to get the EFT bank information that I need. So I can call my uh, smart list, um, I'll call it vendor EFT bank info. And it already has the product selected as being Microsoft Dynamics GP. Although you can see here's all the other products are listed and they correspond with the database view products. And then the series came in as purchasing so that when I create this smart list, it will show up under the purchasing folder. Now all I need to do is find the correct table that I want to use to get the EFT information. So I know that the vendor EFT information is found under the GP product. So I click the plus sign on that, and that opens up the section where I can click the plus sign next to tables. So this gets to be a little more complicated because you need to know where the table is located. And in this instance, I think it's under company. And the reason I think that is because the EFT information that's held in GP is for both customers and vendors. So that usually implies that it's not necessarily under purchasing or under sales, but instead it's under company. So I'm going to start with that and click the plus sign. And if it's not in here, I can always look under purchasing or sales too until I actually find the table I want. So if I look through here, um, here's the one that's the address electronic funds master. And if I click the plus sign on that, I can see all the information that indicates that, yeah, that is the table that I want. So. In this instance, I already have my vendor ID and my vendor name selected, so I don't need to select that from here. What I do need is the information like the EFT bank type, whether it's inactive or not, the bank name, the bank account. I'm going to skip over some of these and select, what else can I pick? I could do the account type and maybe the transfer method, and here's the routing number. And what you'll notice is that as I was marking the boxes here, they show up down here in the lower part of this. Uh, but because that is a separate table, so we have the electronic funds and the vendor addresses. Those are two different tables. I have to define a relationship between the two tables so that the smart list will be able to calculate everything and join it all together correctly. So I'm going to pick the table name. I'm going to start with the vendor addresses. And the field name in there that I need is the vendor ID. Then in this column, it's asking you, how do you want to join the two tables together? So if I say that I want 
a left join, it means it's going to take all the fields from this vendor addresses master and anytime there's nothing in the um, address electronic funds table, it will show up still that there's a vendor address there. And the reason I would do that one is so that I can see all my vendors and I can see if they actually have an electronic bank information or not. If I did an inner join, it would say only do the join on things where there is a match between the two. So if I do an inner join, it's not going to show me the information if the electronic bank information is not set up for a vendor. I hardly ever use the cross joins. So cross joins is going to say, show me everything from both tables and you know don't really join them up together. So I hardly ever use that. I almost always use the left join because I want to see everything from this first table join and then whatever information is available from the second table. So I'm going to pick um, my second table is the address electronic funds and I need to join it on my vendor ID because I'm using the vendor ID here. However, the electronic funds master is based on the vendor address, not just the vendor ID. So I need to tab down and have another join. So I'm going to say from the vendor address with the address ID. So now I have a problem because I don't have my address ID in here. I'm going to go back to my tables here. And under purchasing, I'm going to find my vendor. Here it is, here it is, PM Vendor Address Master. And I need the address code. And then I can say this vendor addresses, which is where I started. And I want the vendor ID left join to my PM addresses, the vendor ID. And then from my PM address master now, I can say the address code is to this address code, but I also need the PM address master vendor ID linked to that vendor ID. So now you can see that I have in this list only one is linked because it's linked to that specific address ID. So that's kind of the basics of doing one. The most difficult thing in the designer is that you need to know what tables to link on and how to get the data out that you really need.